is the big daddy of all small cars, the OG that cemented Suzuki as the number one car seller in India. It's under par by today's standards, but still offers this really peppy and raw feeling just coupled up in this really small, cute, tiny car that just makes it so much fun to drive and really appealing to even an enthusiast like myself. I have one, I love it and drive it every day. And here's why you should too. This is how the Suzuki 800 came to India. Okay, so before we begin, I just wanted to clear that it's a uh, very difficult to give the 800 or Alto generations if you talk about it internationally because it's got a lot of variations in different markets so i'll be sticking to just the indian generations of the alto and the 800 nameplate and so i'll not be mentioning the a star or the salerio although they were sold as altos internationally but i will be mentioning a couple of jdm classics because those cars were really amazing and you guys should just really check them out it's 1982, Bollywood movie Vidat just topped the charts, bell bottom jeans and disco is just a little thing and Maruti Udyog, then owned by the government, entered into a joint venture agreement with Suzuki of Japan. At first, Maruti Suzuki was just an importer in India's closed markets and they received the right to import 40,000 fully built Suzuki cars into India. This was only for the first two years, but even the plan after that was to source only 33% indigenous parts. The first 800 was based on the 1979 Suzuki Alto, but unlike the Japanese spec, this had square lights and a bigger bumper similar to that of the Euro spec Suzuki SS80. It launched with the 796cc 3-cylinder 6-valve SOHC engine that produced 35 bhp of power. Now internally this engine was known as the F8B engine and what's really amazing is that this engine stayed in the car right up to the last 800 ever sold here. Uh, and it could have actually been upgraded to the BS4 norms had it not been for the sibling rivalry between the Alto and the 800 wherein the 800 was actually eating into sales of the Alto so Suzuki decided to axe the 800 and along with it died the F8B engine the F8B engine was co-developed with Daewoo motors of South Korea and so the Matis that were sold over here uh, had the same F8B engine as the 800. So anyone out there with a Matiz and a blown or a seized engine can head to their local junkyard and source an 800 engine and I'm sure it should fit like a glove. Towards the end of 1986, just two years after the first 800 was launched, Suzuki released the second generation of the 800 in India. Now this 800 was merely a cosmetic update both for the interior and the exterior styling while the internals and the engine remain totally unchanged so underneath this was the same 800 in 1987 suzuki of japan decided to go a little crazy because they launched the suzuki alto works rsx and rsr it came with a turbocharged 550 cc engine that produced 64 ps of power look i know that 64 ps is not a lot of power but for a car of that size and with that weight uh it's fun also it had a 9500 rpm red line so and was the first k car to reach that 64 ps legal limit it wasn't a cappuccino or a honda beat but an alto while the rsx had the normal front wheel drive setup the rsr had an all-wheel drive system in it yes a freaking all-wheel drive system in an 800 in 1987 this just shows the potential of the car i mean sure we got the watered down cute cuddly version of it but it doesn't have to be that way we can definitely try to convert one at least into an rsx because shoving in an all-wheel drive system into the car is definitely going to be very difficult and complicated but 
at least try and build an RSX. I know I'm definitely going to try to do that one day. In the late 80s, approximately 1988 till 1990, the Maruti 800 was available in a built to order option of an automatic. Yep, an automatic 800. It came with a 3-speed automatic gearbox and was only available if you could produce a certificate of 25% or more disability from a doctor. Suzuki soon found out that people were faking disability certificates. I am not surprised over there. And so they deleted the option of an automatic 800 in 1990. So I guess this makes it one of the rarest 800s you can own in our country right now. In 1991, the 800 got another minor update and the only difference being a new grille up front and they deleted the uh, hood release which was on top of the hood. Uh I personally preferred the previous generation grille cuz it kind of gave it that Toyota AE86 Levin look. So that's just me though. In 1997, the year I was born, Suzuki launched the new 800, giving it a rounder and more Jerry Bean-esque design language that they had started following during that era. In 1999, the 800's F8B engine got an option of an MPFI system, and this bumped up the power to 37 bhp. The year 2000 saw the launch of the Alto in India and it was sold alongside the 800. The same year they discontinued the carbureted version of the F8B engine and so the 800 was available only with the MPFI version. This was to meet the Euro 2 or BS2 norms which were about to kick in. With the Alto came in another engine which was called the F8D engine based off the 800's F8B. The only difference being that this F8D engine came with four valves per cylinder and so produced 45 bhp of power instead of 35. It was mated to a five-speed manual transmission. And what's really amazing is that this engine is the same engine that is there in the current generation alto 800 and has even been upgraded to bs6 so the alto 800 has a 20 year old engine in it to spice things up a little suzuki decided to plonk in the f8d engine of the alto into the 800 and sold it as the 5 speed 800 it produced the same 45 bhp of power but it was in a lighter package So I guess you can consider it as a lukewarm hatchback. Now, would Suzuki let the 800 be the fun car with the same engine as the Alto but less weight? Of course not. So they shoved in the 1061 cc F10D engine, which was doing duty in the heavier hashtag thick boy wagoner into the Alto, and what do you get? The Alto 1.1. It was a light, nimble little baby that produced 57.5 bhp of power. I don't know. Maybe we should consider that as Suzuki India's first hot hatch. Anyone else think that the Suzuki of that time was a wilder one and just want them back? Unfortunately, neither of these cars did too well, and so the 5-speed 800 was discontinued in 2003, while the Alto 1.1 was axed in 2005. Not surprised there. Even when we get good cars, we don't seem to buy them. So it's kind of our fault that we're not getting some good cars over here right now. After this, changes to both the cars were minor. with the 800 getting a new honeycomb style grill in early 2003 and later in 2004 it got a new set of lights and the F8B engine was updated to meet BS3 norms while the Alto received a new set of lights in 2006 in 2010 Suzuki launched the Alto K10 which had a detuned K series engine from the A-star 
they called a new engine the K10B and it produced just 68 bhp of power but coupled with the Alto's lightweight it came together as quite a peppy fun nimble little package and finally 2012 marked the beginning of the end of the 800 as we know it the new Alto 800 was launched which was going to replace the now aging 800 and eventually the Alto as well as I mentioned earlier, the Alto 800 used the same F8D engine but with tweaks to make it BS4 compliant and now it's BS6 compliant as well. In 2014, we saw the release of the second generation Alto K10 and after that it has remained largely the same. But in 2015, Suzuki of Japan launched the Alto Works RS and just look at it, I mean it's kept up to the name I guess because it literally looks so amazing like a mini Ignis on steroids. In 2018 we saw a slightly revised Alto 800 and otherwise everything else has been pretty much the same for us here in India. And that's how the 800 came to India and stole our hearts. Well, at least it stole mine. Hey guys, uh, I just want to ask you what you think about the format of this video, uh, have any suggestions or some changes that you want me to make, uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, also have some um, requests which car or bike or the company that you want me to do my future videos on, uh, please let me know. Uh, have some cool pictures of your cars or bikes or a story that you want to share, uh, send them my way on Instagram, uh, this is my Insta handle. And I'll feature them at the end of my next video along with a shout out. Uh, let's just show everyone how amazing this car community is and grow it that way. We all know that the car community in India needs some growing. Uh, if I've forgotten anything in the video, just uh, let me know down in the comments. I surely have. It's the first time I'm doing this and finding information about this car in the past was a little difficult. But I'm learning the ropes. Uh, also go a little easy on the quality of this uh, video because uh, I shot this using my phone so the camera wasn't really that up to the mark, it's not really a great camera so uh, yes, uh, please do like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel to go a long way for me and help me make more videos for you guys and I really want to. Uh, until then, stay safe, be nice, stay home and uh, keep loving cars and bikes.